Hello everyone, as we've talked about Misto Line previously on SDXL, this is an incredible detailed line trace preprocessor for Control Net. Today we have the Misto Line for Flux 1 dev model. Here we have some details about the Misto Line for Flux in Hugging Face, and it is able to run with the GGUF model. It's also able to run with the Flux 1 dev 8 and FP16 models. The quality will be better, of course, for FP16. Right here we have some examples. I want to show you guys the difference between this control net and the normal line art or canny control net. Let's zoom into the image here. As you can see, here's a graph generated from Misto line and through this control net it generated another GTR 33 lookalike sport car. We have another image that's rendered from a shop on the street like this one. It's very detailed and able to trace up all this detailed line and element. And this other image is an urban street that looks like it's in Korea, very detailed on all the buildings. Able to trace out those lines from the building and window frames. This control net preprocessor and the models are doing very well for this kind of building structure control net to trace out those elements. Here we have another example that's using the Hyper SD and able to render images with 16 or lower steps. Even with the lower steps, as you can see in the comparison that F1 sports car, we trace that using the Misto line and the Misto line preprocessors, we call that the Any line. The result here looks amazing. All the details are traced from the source image and compared with the line art. As we can see right here, we got the line art result. It's not that detailed. Although the line art in general control net is already very strong on the form and shape of objects, for the inner detail of each thing within that structure of objects or building structures or the car, when we put that side by side comparison with any line, it is totally two different things. By using the Misto line flux, we have to install custom nodes that are the same as with the SDXL Misto line. So in their GitHub project, they have their Mistoline Flux custom nodes that are dedicated to the processing of Mistoline control net. Basically, this is a simple text-to-image workflow that they did for the examples, and pretty much it's a normal dual-clip loader and the load checkpoint models passing those text-to-text -text encoder and processing in a K-sampler, and we get the generated image. But one thing we have to see is that the K-sampler we're using is the Mistoline Flux K-sampler, and we have the load Misto line models, custom nodes, as well as the preprocessors. So three things are different between these other general control net models. And also, we got the AnyLine line art preprocessors for tracing out the reference image, those trace line details to apply control net for Misto line custom nodes to process that detail of outlining every single thing on the reference image. Then we pass those conditions of the control net to this special K sampler that is built for Misto line control net, just like XLab AI. They're using another input conditioning for the K sampler to receive those conditioning data rather than going through from the positive and negative conditioning. As you can see, here's the general control net connections that I did previously in the Flux Union Pro models, and it is passing through the positive negative conditions, going through the data of that to a normal K sampler. But in here, Mistoline, they're working like XLAI in the way that they have a dedicated control net conditions input parameter, passing those data from the AnyLine preprocessors to make those generated AI images happen. So that is something different. And we have to consider how we design the workflows when we're using the Mistoline, working with the other components in your AI generate image workflow. So how do we get this installed? First of all, we go to the command prompt window and navigate to the custom nodes folder. We do a git clone and download those files from the GitHub project for the custom nodes package. Once we're done, we go back to the Hugging Face page, download the Misto Line Flux Dev version 1 files so they have both the bin file and save tensors file. Let's say we're going to use the save tensor files and download that in the comfy UI models. Under the models folder, we have to create another subfolder called the Misto line models. So go to the models folder, we create another subfolder Misto line models and put those files in there. Once the download finishes, we'll see this appear and we can start working on the Misto line examples. Going back to the custom nodes here, 
we got the examples custom nodes workflow for this Mistoline control net. And as you can see, their demos right here are using dual clip and load checkpoints and LoRa loader. In the LoRa loader, the example workflow are using the hyperflux, which lowered the sampling steps. But I'm not gonna use that one. It's not the purpose of demoing in this video. For the bottom part, we have Mistoline control net for flux. We have that version one safe tensors file and then I have a living room image for the reference image. We'll be using the same connections as the example workflow for the control net connections here. Now you can find this AnyLine preprocessor in the control net auxiliary custom nodes package. It's also included in there already, just like SDXL previously. We have the AnyLine preprocessor as well. You can drag another image preview to view that trace line result, or you can view that trace line result in the condition image in the apply misto line control net flux custom nodes. So the output of that will include the control net conditions and the conditions image. Something I'll change in the load checkpoint and the dual clip loader, I want to test with the GGUF quantized model files because they mentioned that you're able to run that in the quantized GGUF format. So let's try out this one. It will be loading consuming less memory using the GGUF quantizations but the quality, of course, will lose a little detail with that. So we'll connect those models and the clip loader to the text clip, and we have to change the text for the text clip in here. For the positive conditions, we'll keep the guidance as 3.5 in here. Not going to change too much on that. So let's do the text prompt first. Erase those two text prompt views and input other text prompts that are suitable for the living room examples. What if I want to change the living room to another style? For example, I want to do a futuristic style living room. I want to include some light effects. Like, for example, I want a strong neon light or RGB style light effect. That is display decorations for this living room. It will be very similar decorations and all the structures of this living room, but we'll have the RGB light decorations as well. And here, I'll set the case sampler guidance to 4.0, and other things I'll keep the same. One more thing we have to configure is the VAE. We have to set the right VAE file's name, and it starts loading up, and we'll have the result soon. As you can see, the AnyLine output image and the Misto line control net output image are the same one. So maybe we'll just use the control net condition image that will be the same output. So here first, we'll see that the trace lines of everything from the reference image are very clear by using Misto line control net. Here we have the preview image for our first generated image of our result. Let's bring it down to the comparisons. Here we can see there's something a little changed. Not exactly the same image or the structure of all the elements and objects are located on the generated image. But like, for example, the TV on the source image is changing a little bit because I'm using 0.5 in the control net conditioning. It won't be exactly generating the same shape and form from the source image to the generated image. So let's say if I put it to zero, it will take effect a lot, adding more 20% of the similarity from the source image. You can see the televisions on the side of the living room appear again. It's right on the generated image, and there's a lot of detail. Even the windows, outside the windows, those buildings, as a background, it's also remaining from the source image to the generated image. But then all the colorations and the light effect, I'm using the text prompt, change RGB styles. You know, there's some pink and purple color going on for the generated image because of that effect. So far, this control net model, just like what I did in previous videos talking about the SDXL versions, is also able to trace very detailed images from our reference image for control net. So I'm not going to worry too much about Mistoline losing detail or whatnot. But of course, if you set it to 1.0 for the condition strength, you will be oversaturated. The conditioning in Flux, I saw that in Flux, their good sweet spot of control net range is between 0.5 to 0.8. And once you go above that or below that, it will not get the result right or is too offensive if you set it too low for the control net conditions. 
So this is the 1.0, and as you can see, the line is starting to saturate the colorations, and the generated image is getting is starting to get broken, basically. So let's try it at the lower conditions. So let's say, for example, we do 0.8 again, and we'll see that it's going back to normal in 0.8 condition strength for the control net. Now the trace line is going back to normal in the generated result, but it's starting to get some cartoon and some different weird objects going on here. So I think the sweet spot is under 0.8 will be good enough for Flux Control Net. And like even in other videos that we test the other Flux Control Net models, it is also going the same way. Like if we do it above 0.8, it will start getting some weird effect. And let's say we do 0.2. And of course, that will be way off from the original source image. But we're still able to get something that has the similarity from our source image. So here we got the result of 0.2 actually looking nice. This one looks good, the generated image. Once we have 0.2, we give a lot more freedom for the flux models to generate something about living room and it's just grabbing like 20% ideas from the source image and has those trace lines for the flux to generate something similar to that. We only have, you know, the couch sofa, we got the TV on the side. But then there's more freedom allowed to get a better image quality and, you know, more details of other styles of living room image. It depends if you want to set it to 0.6 right in the middle, then that pretty much matches with the source image itself. Here's another example. We can do like a building scene with a human character as well, able to trace those lines. I set it to a 3D cartoon style on this one. The building in the background is awesome. This control net is able to trace those buildings very detailed. Even back with SDXL Mistoline, it was able to do that as well. I have no doubt about this control net for trace line detail, it's just a matter of whether Flux is able to work well with this control net or not. So that's it for this video. I wanted to show how the development of the control net is going on in Flux, so I'll see you guys in the next video. Have a nice day, see ya!